Divorce series has been running for the past three weeks and today is actually a different one because today we are going into a zone of how you can overcome the emotional trauma of it. That's a part that people ask so many questions. People have said that in Ghana, if you are going through divorce, it costs more than when you're getting married. Why is this so? Now, when we even talk about the emotional aspect, it can break you, it can destroy you, it can kill you. And a lot of you women, I'll say women, I'm actually saying women, I'm not saying all women, a lot of women who actually go through divorce actually end up losing their lives because they are not able to get the kind of help that they need to be able to bounce back. And today we have a psychologist here who is going to help us with this particular conversation. And also we have a woman who has gone through it and how she was able to overcome it, how she's been able to stand firm all these years, how she's been able to get her ex-husband to support her to raise the children is another thing that we all need to stay glued to our television set to get to know about. Let me introduce my guest to you for today and for our psychologist we have Na Okaile who is a counseling psychologist with a mental wellness she's a mental wellness coach as well hello Na how are you today Good. great I'm fine thank you and thank you for being here today great and we know the conversation is definitely going to be great yeah I also have Lillian and Lillian is a divorcee uh, Lillian has seen it all she's been there she has drunk the bitter pill but she didn't die out of drinking the bitter pill what she did was to be able to overcome it and she's here to share her story with us good morning Lillian good morning how are you today I'm good you're yourself. looking beautiful thank you great Me too. now uh, you know when we speak about the fact that we have somebody who has been there seen it all of course, it be you. We want to start the conversation from your side, and uh, we can now bring in, uh, you know, Na, so Na can actually, you know, tell us what people out there need to be able to overcome the emotional trauma of it or the emotional trauma aspects of it. So, Lillian, tell us your story. Okay. Um, I got married in 20, 2006 when I was just 26 years. So I had no trade. And in fact, I had just I had finished my secondary school, but I had no trade, no, had not fed my education yet. And I got married. It was all nice, just in the beginning, you know. And um, we had our first daughter. No, so I had my first daughter before we even got married. Okay. In six months, and I got married. Okay, so in the second child came on and then Things started, you know, going some way for me, but I really don't want to go into details because as of now, we are very cool. We are, we, we are very cool together. I'm very fine with him because he, he takes very good care of my kids and I'm so grateful to him. So, um, things started going bad. And in fact, um, in the beginning, I didn't want to, um, he asked what, I mean, if I wanted to go to school, and I said, oh, you for now, take care of the kids for me, and then we will see. So I, I had no plan of federing my education or something. So when everything started, I went to, in fact, when we, we, the problem started, he wasn't cool with me. We were, you know, I mean, having a fight. So I went to my mom, and I was like, I want to feather my education because seeing that what is going on, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a bit scared. So... My mom said, okay, I'll support you if that's what you really want to do. And yeah, so in 2017, there about, I went to pick up, um, in fact, so before um, everything started, um, I went back to my mother's house with my kids. So I was in my neighborhood and I saw this poster um, looking for mobile banker at that time because I was just having an SS background. I told my mother I would do this. In fact, my kid's father was very angry at me going to do such a job. Mobile banker, you know, it involves um, going rounds for cash and all that. In fact, he was very, very angry with me. But Why since, was he angry? Uh, he, he, does, he, he actually doesn't want me to work. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's how I see it. When we were together, I wasn't working, nothing. So when I saw it, I told my mother, I'm go, I'll, I'll go for this job. So when I went... I, in a year time, my boss was like, when we have a meeting, my boss makes me take minutes for the meeting. So he was like, ah, Lillian, you are, you are very intelligent, so why don't you feather your education? And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see. So I told my mother and then went to pick up um, 
that's matured and transformed with UCC. Mm -hmm. So I did that for I think six months or so. And then the same 2017, I got admitted um, at UCC um, to do my diploma in business management. So it wasn't easy because my mom at then was in the house, wasn't working, and I also wasn't working. But I said I'll, I'll work and then help myself with this um, diploma education. So I went through it and then God, um, God being so good. I had um, a sales job at Bond Financial Services. So I was there for I think a year, a year or so and um, my contract was cancelled. So I went on and then had another, tried to find another job whilst having my diploma education. So, and all of this, you wasn't happy about it, that you were well, back in school? I would say so, because it's like, um, in the beginning, he didn't, he didn't let me come with the case because um, he didn't, he wanted me to come back. But the situation, how it was, I, I said, I said, I don't want to go into details, but because of the situation, I cannot go by myself. He has to come to my family. And then if really he wants me back. At that time, if you don't mind me asking right. you, was he cheating or it was... Okay, so it was part. It was part of yes, it. Yes, it was part. Was, was, was there physical abuse? Um, sometimes, sometimes, because we do have arguments and then it's like Manoye Day or something. You know, I, I wasn't, for me, I'm not someone who, can, who would um, allow myself to be bullied. There's something like that. So it's, it's like being and all those things. So it, it all happened and I had to go back to my mother's so place. that's why you packed out. I didn't pack out. In, in fact, <laughs> in fact, he packed my things to my mother's place, and I followed up. So, so as I said, um, I was having my diploma education, and so I think um, it was about um, I was left about eight months to finish. It, it was a three-year course. Then I will and have two-year um, degree degree program. So I think about eight months to my finishing. <laughs> so through when I was having my education and then I lost my job at Bond Financial Services, I was praying to God that he should open up a way for me to get another job since I don't want to end up just at the diploma level. So um, when it's left about eight months for me to complete my diploma education, I had a call, in fact, from a, a, a family that, um, what am I doing now? And that um, she... Um, she wants to open uh, with the she together with her partners wants to set up a micro credit business so she would like me to head it since i've been in that field for some time and i said okay why not so it's it, it, i got opportunity to manage a micro credit and all this time yeah. you know he had made you go live with your so, your mom yes and had he married again had he brought in a okay, new so woman now he's married he's married okay. again with some kids so when you were going through the whole divorce process like you was it a wedding or was it a traditional okay, marriage so it was a traditional marriage okay yes. and did you register it in court so we were in the process and i don't know he he said we should hold on for some time so we we, we, we stayed for about almost yeah, nine years Yes. So you were married for nine years? Yes. With how many children? With two, two children. Two so, children, okay. No, so with three children, with yes. Three I had children. had my last one before okay. I went to, to my mommy's place. Okay. Yeah. So with regards to, you know, the separation, yeah. you said he packed your things out sure. because he said that you were disrespectful. Yes, yes. And in that course of you, he said you were disrespectful. You said he was physically abusive sometimes. Sometimes. So now in the time of separation, was he giving you any kind of attention? Did you did you try to go back to beg or you know plead with him for the two of you to come back together for the sake of the children? Okay. So at the time I had gone to my mom's place, he was staying somewhere else because we were in the process of um, moving from where we were staying. So he was like he wants to go to his his father had a, a house at Bawe, like it wasn't complete, so he wanted to finish it up and then move in. So he was staying somewhere else. But at that time, I got to know he was with someone else at that place. In fact, even at that time, um, I heard, when I heard she was with someone at that, at that place, um, 
before I came to my mother's place, we had this washing base business. Even at that, he didn't want me to go there. But I, I would say I, I, I went there myself without him trying to manage the place and all that. And there was this television there. But the, because of the, um, the, the land wasn't for him, the business collapsed a bit. So I had this TV at the washing base place. So I had, um, he has come for the TV. One of the boys that I was told me he had come for the TV. And I was like, ah. At that time, I was with my mother's place. So, so um, when I heard he had come for the TV, I knew the girlfriend was um, having this manicure and pedicure shop, establishing it. So, so uh, I was like, uh, is it that he has going to give it to him? So you went to, to her first shop? Yes, of course. At that time, you know, I would say I was a kid and I, I, I hadn't matured enough. So you fought with her? So girl? I didn't fight. I went with a taxi, in fact, and went to pick up my television from there. Mm. Yes, because I was hurt at that time when I heard he was with someone else. Were you the one who bought the television? It was no, it's no, it was okay, not me. It was but him. Yes. yes. Okay. But I was using it at the washing bin. Right. Yes. So I went with the taxi and then I went to pick it up. And the lady couldn't say anything. I took it back. In fact, he was really furious. But oh, so he got upset because you yes, went for the team. Yes, set. at that time. So to cut along the long story short. Um, I was with my mom and then with, with the kids at that time. So when he went to the father's place, I even went back. Yes, I remember I went back. And then the, the problem started again. Same cheating problem. Yes, and then, so, so I, okay. So I'm sure when I went back is when he packed my things to my mommy's place. Okay, let me ask you this. Mm. You know, through all this period of separation, that was before the divorce, the yeah. separation period, you were going to school. How were you yes. able to manage the emotional mm. aspect of it? Yes. And how, how was it with your friends and your family, knowing that you had been packed out with your family house? Sure, sure. So, it, it, in fact, it wasn't easy at all. And at that time, my mom too was in the house, not working as well. But, you know, through a, a friend of hers who also supported me with the school and then some feeling. In fact, I, I'll say a big thank you to my mother for her massive support. If it hadn't been for her through my divorce and all that, the, I, I don't know. I don't think I would, I would have survived it. Were the days you broke down to cry? Of course. Did you have regrets of your attitude in your marriage? Um, sometimes, but I think it got to a time I said, no, I have to. I mean, I have to um, be on my feet. And During then, the time of the separation, did you yeah. love him? Of course, of course. I, I never anticipated the divorcing. Yes, that, that was not my plan. That was not my plan, but you know. So I, even though he was cheating, mm. you still wanted to be in that Of marriage. course, of course. Definitely, I know in Ghana, um, the society embraces women to, uh, sorry, men to, to, to be freely, I mean, have... Um, other partners aside their, their wives but um, I knew it was something with men and I was praying it will stop one day but so you were willing to adjust but yes. he couldn't adjust with your life I'm sure okay I'm sure. let me bring in now now <laughs> you know we've listened to all that she has said mm -hmm. and uh, obviously you've met a few people who have similar issues but what's your take out of what she said um, with her attitude, the man's attitude, they couldn't get together, the emotional aspect of it went, you know, they separated and all. Um, thanks for sharing, you know, to start with. Um, sharing some of these sensitive um, issues can be a bit tough. I realized there were so, a lot of times she was holding back so she doesn't break down TV. Um, nobody goes into marriage with the plan that I'm going there to divorce in the next XYZ years. So usually the energy is just to create that family and then have that happily ever after life. You realize that in her um, scenario, there was a lot of um, disagreements, instances where they were not agreeing together. I want to work, he doesn't want me to work. I want to go to school, he doesn't want me to go to school. So it could be that the husband probably had his own fears or his own orientation about how women should be in marriage. And she also, as empowered as she wants to be, conflicted with that particular orientation the husband had or the ex-husband had. And obviously, once you don't come to that point of understanding, 
marriage is one place that will evolve you, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. It, it's a whole journey of evolution. So if one person is not adjusting to that evolution, you will definitely have issues. If she's evolving from a secondary school leaver to become a graduate and probably a career person, and the partner is not in for that evolution, there will definitely be a, a banter somewhere. And obviously, if one person doesn't cave in, mm -hmm. then the marriage itself as an institution is going to cave in. So from, from everything she said, that's what I take from it, that there was a lot of um, disagreements. One person didn't want the evolution to proceed. And that's where the issues start from, where, yeah. you know, there's, there's this kind of misunderstanding. We can't understand each other because our values are different. Exactly. How, with you and your husband, you know, what was the age difference? Okay, so he's three years older than me. Oh, three years older. Yeah, which is regular. Okay. <laughs> which is regular, right? So with that, then you least expect it. Well, will you say as a psychologist that that will also amount to uh, the reaction from the wife? Because the age gap is not that big. And so when he does something, she feels I can stand up to such a person. It doesn't play out always like that because you can still have people who have a very wide age gap, but they understand each other. Or you can have people who are of the same age. We even have instances where the women are older. And it doesn't come to play because it, it's, it's not considered a very significant part of the growth of the marriage. The moment you make all these things, it's the perceptions we have. If you redefine your perceptions about things, even in marriage, it changes a lot of the dynamics in the marriage. Like you said, we are two different people coming together. Unfortunately, in this part of the world, marriage is on a certain pedestal. And for you to get there, many people get carried away by the preparation and the realities of that milestone. Because I need to get there. Once you get there, people think, oh, then you have achieved, you have arrived. Oh, then there's something more to your name. So we get carried away by all that um, fanciness, for lack of a better word, that we, we lose track of the fact that this is, these are two lives coming mm -hmm. together to, to continue their lives. Literally, nothing much should change about your existence. For, for the best of it, it should be a value addition. So if that value is not being added as you've entered into that, that place, um, then it will, it will shrink you, and if you rebel, it's going to break a lot of things. Let me ask another question here. Okay. Um, traditional marriage, did you go through counseling before you got married? Okay, so we were in the same church, and yes, the, the, the process was to have a counseling session before. But um, unfortunately, we didn't, um, because um, we, we decided to do, to do just the traditional wedding, we thought... Um, we, we, we should just do the traditional wedding. When we are ready to do the, um, the white one, then we seek for um, counseling from the church. But since it didn't happen, um, we actually didn't have any formal counseling. Do you sometimes feel that it's a contributing factor to your yes, misunderstanding? Sometimes, yes, sometimes I do feel so, yeah. Mm. So how long did you date? Oh, quite a while. So I think... I was in it was it after secondary school. Yes, after secondary school. So we got married in 2016, 2006. 2006 yeah. I finished secondary school in 2000. So quite a while. I would say maybe five years or so before we got married. Before you got married. Now let's talk about counseling, the essence of counseling, premarital counseling. Um, still people who even have it have divorces. But with her case, for instance, uh, it looks like the premarital counseling didn't come to play and probably could be one of the reasons why they couldn't understand each other. Um, yes and no. <laughs> Just like you said, people go through counseling. Some churches even do six months, some churches do one year. And after a couple of years or months, the, the, the couples divorce. So it's not so much on whether you had access to counseling before even counseling after marriage is more important than counseling before marriage because before marriage we've not gotten there yet so we are just mm -hmm. guessing and hoping that things pan out a certain way but the moment you are in it now the reality hits you so you need counseling more at that time even than the premarital i'm not saying that it's not right or it's not good to go for premarital counseling it's absolutely um a key part of wanting 
to start the journey of marriage. You have to, if you have the opportunity to go all out for it. But then know that the work more lies more on you than the counseling. Your counselors can say everything, they can teach you everything, but if you are not ready to accept it and go with it into the marriage and then have it as part of your evolution process, like I already said, marriage is just, is just an evolving phase of everybody's life. If you don't use those tools to guide yourself on the evolution process, then it might as well not matter at all. So when the problem started, did you seek help? Did you seek advice? Did you get people to try to help with the issues? Of course, since we were all in the same church. So you know at that time, as we said, maybe we were both not matured. Because um, he has people, I mean, um, pastors and reverend ministers call him and he was adamant. You know, so at a point he had to stop the church. But I'm still in the church now, though. Um, so people, even my family, do call him, but he was adamant to it. So he still didn't attend any family meeting? <laughs> no, no, not that I remember. Hmm. Anyway, so I don't know what would get a man to that level because usually when the problems start and there are people that they revere, when you speak with them, they actually do listen. Now, this is a case where he didn't even want to listen at all. Could it be that from the onset there wasn't much love? Hmm. It could be. But from the beginning, was there anybody he was even listening to before problems came? So if you if you are in a relationship with someone who has nobody that can talk to them, even at the relationship phase, that is a major red flag that you have to run for your life. Because if nobody can talk you to reasoning, then when issues come, it will be difficult for the person to listen. If at the time when everything is rosy, he doesn't listen to anybody, then when you encounter problems, it will be very tough for anyone to appeal to him to even side with you. So let's say your wife wants to go to school. There's nothing wrong with your wife wanting to go to school. So if you have a problem with it, maybe you haven't understood it from a certain uh, or from other angles. Once you have someone who can talk you into it, like, oh, this is actually going to be an add a value being added to your relationship. Imagine your wife starts making money, you're also making money. It reduces the pressure on you financially. It reduces the pressure on you mentally. So many men are stressed because they have to do everything by themselves. So if you are lucky and you have a woman who is ready to come onto the boat with you and then stay affairs with you, I think it's a win-win. So then he will question, hmm, okay, I haven't thought of it from this angle. But then if there's nobody who but can appeal to him like that. you have a lot of like men that, like that who will say that I want you to be a stay-at-home mom to help raise the children. Because if you go, then the children will lack. And so you, these problems are actually happening, even in the elite homes. Because yeah. there are some people that you think that oh, this person is so elite. His mother was working, and so you're expecting that when he marries you, you say you can work, but then right after when after marriage, what happens? All right, when you are married, what happens is I don't want you to work. Quit your job. Come and so you I'm don't on. work with assumptions when you are dating people. Ask all the questions. Ask all the tough questions. Ask everything. One day when you become a billionaire, what, would you, what? How do you envisage yourself like? Oh, for me, once I get to this place, I'll do this. I like this, and then it gives you a sense of okay. Hmm. This is how the person's mindset is like. It's just because he's broke now. <laughs> Maybe when he becomes a rich man, a lot of things will change. There are people who say, oh, I would like to have many wives. It's just because I can't afford. It means when they get to the point of affordability, be ready for more. Mm. So once you ask all those questions at the dating phase, that right now I'm, I'm just an SS lever. That is why I'm not doing much with my life. I want to go back to school someday and become a, a banker, whatever it is. And he's like, for what? Mm -hmm. what, would you, what do you need that for? I don't, I don't think you have to, it's not necessary. You might see it as love. For, some, for many women, they see those things as like, oh, he's protecting me, mm -hmm. he's, he's, you know, he doesn't want me to stress. But you get there and you realize that life is not just about being a wife and a mother and doing house chores. There's, There's a lot to way. what women want to achieve, not just women, human, human beings want to achieve. And that is where the banters will come in, that I, I, I never thought you want to go back to school. 
Now, let's talk about the most difficult time during the divorce, your most mm. difficult emotional period. Walk us through it. What was it? What was the real thing that you struggled with? Okay. So I would say sometimes when I go to church, like my, some of them who are already, I'm still in their marriages, I sometimes look at them and I was like, is there something wrong, like something wrong with me or something that I didn't do right? I quite remember I went to a family, um, a, a cousin was having a naming ceremony. In fact, when I went there, other cousins came with their kids and, you know, I knew they were still in their marriage. So I, was, I, I even broke down at there. It's just, I was like, what, what did I do? What didn't I do right? Or what have I done? Like, I, I broke down there. So those days when, when I see people in their marriage, I, I sometimes do regret mine didn't work. But now I, I think I found strength. So, mm. uh, and um, I really want to inspire my, my girls. I have three girls with him. I really want to inspire them. That's why I'm, I'm, aspire, I'm aspiring to do more so that when, when they grow up, they, they, will just, they will not just be stay at home moms. They will, they will want to have their own um, vocation before they settle down. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it normal? or divorcees to have regrets after divorce and go through that emotional phase, especially when they see their colleagues still married. Yeah. Yeah. I um, already mentioned that we have placed marriage on a certain pedestal. So the moment you get there, oh, then it's, a, it's great. <laughs> the moment you lose that pedestal, then it's like you just fall in from grace to grass. So then everyone thinks there's a problem with you. Then the guilt, like she was saying, comes in, the regrets. Maybe I shouldn't have left, or maybe I shouldn't have been married at all. You know, so there'll be a lot of questions on your mind. And society is not too friendly with, with people who go through divorce, especially women. So you find, even in conversations that have to do with marriage, the moment you bring an opinion, people are like, you could even keep yours. What makes yeah. you think you can advise us? So then the stigma, the social alienation people you know giving you all manner of gestures and maybe we need to normalize or reteach society that divorce is a part of life just like marriage it's a face so if you find yourself there it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you or you can never bounce back there are many people who have divorced and remarried and we have a lot of people even in like popular people we know who are in their third or fourth marriages and they just got into that amazing marriage they are living the best of their lives now in their fourth marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I don't, I don't um, advocate for divorce, but at the point where it becomes a necessity to the union, it shouldn't be the reason why you can't live your life again. Right. For you at home, you can also join the conversation. Do send your messages to our WhatsApp line and would love to read it. If you have any questions, of course, we have Na here who is a psychologist and she will answer all the questions. If you also have questions for Lily, and why not? You can ask the questions. If you have any contributions as well, please do send in your contributions and we'll read it live on air. But Lillian, let me also uh, get to understand, you, you know, we spoke about stigmatization. Did you go through it? Did you experience it? How did it break or make you? Okay, maybe um, people were doing it behind me. I didn't really see someone or heard someone um, talking ill about my, my divorce or, or yeah. But um, sometimes um, um, I, I myself do feel, especially when I get into um, a marriage, like people, couple who are married, I do feel... <laughs> Am I, am I ready to be here or, um, I mean, I, I just sometimes feel I'm, I don't have the right or I don't have the moral right to be there. But I, I didn't see or hear someone saying, in fact, um, the youth in my church, I'll, I'll, I'll applaud them because they, they mostly ad, um, tell me they do admire me a lot because I'm always wearing a smile at church and all that, but I didn't really hear someone saying anything ill about my dear faith. Now, please walk us through some of the emotional journeys that a divorcee go through aside, you know, what she just spoke about. Okay, so um, divorce is one of the premises for trauma. 
there are a lot of negative things that usually necessitate divorce. Nobody leaves a happy marriage. So the moment the conversation of divorce comes in, it means there's a background of negative energy. So whether abuse, manipulation, um, disrespect, infidelity, financial issues, there are a lot of things that push people into divorce. So by the time you are getting into a lawyer's office or whatever, or your family are coming in to dissolve the marriage, it means that there's been a baggage of toxic energy. First of all, that baggage will hit you and affect you in different ways. So you realize that you go through a lot of, some people go through depression, anxiety, guilt, um, even denial. There are a lot of people who live in denial that this is not me, this is not happening to me. I didn't bargain for this, I didn't sign up for this. And the denial can go on for years until you come to that point of healing where you, are, you acknowledge that I never bargained for this, yes, but it is happening. How do I take this as a unique story of my life and use it as my powerhouse? So that is where you need professional guidance and help to help you through the journeys, heal through the, the emotional stress, the loneliness, the rejection, even the self-stigma. Mm -hmm. You realize Lillian was saying that whenever she even goes to um, people, places where they are married people, you begin to stigmatize your own self. When people haven't even approached here. years. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you went into a marriage and it didn't work doesn't mean anything. We leave jobs and we don't, we don't, um, Think that because I left banking into movies, I no longer belong where people who have banking backgrounds are. But the moment mm -hmm. it comes to marriage, it becomes like a part of us has been rubbed off and it changes who we are. So you have to come to the point of acknowledging how this process has affected you. What has it taken away from you? Which part of your personality has been compromised on? And how do you successfully heal? Else, you will unconsciously pass on those traumas to your children. Mm. And then it becomes a repetitive thing. Then it becomes what we call generational curse, which might not even it's be spiritual. Be, yeah, but it's because one person or one generation in the family did not heal from that, that, that um, um, truncation in their life. So maybe your grandmother or your mother had a, a history of divorce. And then they brought in all the bitterness, the anger and everything. And then though it will manifest in how you treat your children. The slightest thing you're angry, the slightest thing, and you know, you bring references from their dad, your stupid father. Da, 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 da. And then all those things, they traumatize your children too. And by the time you realize they grow up, the very things you are praying they don't go through, you find them going through because that is what you expose to them. The brain learns by orientation, by what you feed it. So if you are feeding your children with the effect of your divorce, they will live the effect of your divorce. So um, we often hear that, oh, children from broken home, uh, blah, 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 blah. It is not really about the broken home. It's the effect of the relationship between the people who broke the relationship. If we should have amicable and peaceful divorces, children would not suffer. So in case like this, how can one overcome these emotional traumas? Because, you know, it, it, it looks like it's a space that whether you like it or not, you might go through yeah. without even realizing you're going to go through. So how do I come out of it? Seek professional help. Talk to somebody you trust about it. The deepest part of how this has affected you shouldn't stay bottled up within you. If you are not even having access to professional help, look out for someone you can trust. It could be your parents, maybe a sibling. It could even be somebody in your church. And unfortunately, many of our churches have been very hostile to divorcees. divorcees. So it also makes them coil when it comes to the area of church. I, I hear there are churches who will stop you from partaking in certain activities. Mm -hmm. You'll be stripped of your certain positions. Mm -hmm. You don't eat communion. And it's a lot of stigma on its own. The moment I can't eat with the Lord, in quotes, then it means I'm, I'm full of sin. I'm, I'm full faint. of, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and it, it, you might not be saying it, but these doctrines, they break them the more. They are looking for a place to receive them. So the moment you identify that this is where we draw the line for you, the moment you divorce, it's already a premise for stigma. So identify someone you can trust. In all of it, 
try to seek for professional help. There are a lot of professionals around. There are counselors, there are psychologists available in this country who are ready to help people the go through these The sad part journeys. is how many women can afford a psychologist? Because there are so many women who have to even pay for these divorce proceedings. Yeah. So they have nothing left on them for them to say, I'm going to have a psychologist. Sometimes you might not even have the right family that will trust you. One day, that same person will use it against you. If you had a good attitude, your husband would have sucked you and stuff like that. It's even some of the men, they go through the same thing as yeah. well. Yeah, you true. know, it's not just the women. Some of the men also go through it. Yeah. Uh, and I want to know, Lillian, for you, did you seek help from a psychologist or how were you able to bounce back? Okay, so I did really seek um, a professional help from a psychologist. But anytime I go to church, I have my elders, my pastors come to me, talk to me that everything will be okay. I shouldn't give up, or blah, 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 you know. I had, I had um, a good family at church who really talked to me because they really knew how we started from church before everything happened. So I give thanks to my church for their support and then their moral support. Let me read some messages here. Napari Dia says, God bless you, RT and Lillian. <laughs> Jonathan Ni nee, Ama Okai says, God bless all mothers. Anastasia Chirema says, um, good job, baby girl. You came out stronger and I'm proud of you. Jonathan Feather says, watching from Mamalam. Okay, Jonathan, thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah, so my aunt went through the same. Yeah, I believe the disagreement between the couples, the trauma was too much. And, uh, you know, the trauma of the whole divorce thing. So are there any other activities, as I speak to someone, that one can engage in that can help come out of the emotional trauma? Yes. So start by exploring yourself again. That's, when you come into therapy, there's something we call self-awareness. And it starts with introspection. You starting to have that conversation with yourself that after this phase of my life, who have I become? Who am I now? And what is the journey ahead of me going to be like? Start a relationship with your own self. There are, there are, there are a lot of parts of ourselves that we don't even know mm. exist. And sometimes these events trigger us to come to discovery of those parts of us. And then see how you can start working on the parts of you that were broken via the divorce. So if trust has been broken, how do I repair my trust for men? How do I repair my trust for people generally? And how do I even channel all this energy into becoming, creating a safe space for my children to also grow? The moment you start working on those areas, you realize that you, be, you emerge, um, it becomes lighter and easier for you to grow through life after divorce. And in case you even meet someone you want to settle with again, you've healed. You are not coming back with the baggage of whatever happened in the past. So there are stages of healing, right? Yes. Okay. C can you walk us through the stages of so healing? So divorce, um, healing through divorce is like healing through grief. It starts for many people with denial, where you realize that you didn't bargain for this. This is not happening. My husband is not cheating on me. My husband is not beating me. My husband is not doing this. Or my wife is not doing this to me. Or I, I am not leaving this marriage. But then the reality is, is, is already near. That's this thing, <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing more we can do to hold it. We might just, you know, let it go. And then once you move into the, um, how do you call it, denial part, you come into, the, so bargaining was what I was doing. Oh, so if you're, if you're a believer or you're a religious person, then you start having conversations with your, your figure of, or, um, your spiritual figure. Oh God, take this away from me. I wish this wasn't happening. What can I do to bring my husband back or my wife back? Blah, 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 blah. And then when God, in quotes, is, is not answering that prayer, then we move into a phase of depression. That, oh my God, so this is really happening. How do I do this? How, how, how can this be happening to me? And then a lot of people, that's where the breaking point starts. So there is depression, and depression comes with a lot of things. Mm. Lots of interest, lots of motivation, lots of drive, self-guilt, self-blame, and for some people, suicide. So if, as we proceed through this, so we go through, allow the person to grieve, allow the person to cry, cry as much as you want, shout, do all the things you have to do to yourself. And now from there, we come to the point of what next? 
how do you want this to pan out? Okay, I want to go back to school. All right, let's continue this journey. So it means that even though you got married, divorced, it's not changing the meaningful life you can have for yourself. Mm -hmm. So that even when whatever happens, maybe you can meet new people, you can start, and it's good to start meeting new people, start socializing, not necessarily to marry. Or but, dating? Yes, okay. but just have people in your corner where you can laugh with. You can share your, your, your issues with. You can feel free and vulnerable with those people. People who have your back. So not necessarily moving into meeting people you are going to, the next available person that can date and marry mm -hmm, immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it could be your friends. It could be um, new people you are meeting, joining a club. So there are people who might be, I like reading. Okay, let me join a book club. Or I like writing. Let me start meeting people or going to functions where these people are. So go out, put yourself out there. Explore the other parts of your life that married, marriage destroyed. But is it not tough? It is. It, it's, it's tough because, you know, you went there probably a month or two ago with your rings on and now you are going without your rings. <laughs> yeah. That whole, you know, that whole idea, that whole, it, it's breaking enough, yeah. isn't it? It's tough. But feel the fear and do it anyway. Being afraid to go out there for fear of what people will say will not change the fact that they will say anything regardless. They eventually see you that, oh, you are living at Malam. Now you are living at Tema. What happened? Or we don't see you with your husband again. Or we, so definitely there will, there will be pointers that will make them know that, oh, okay, there could be something happening. Even with people we don't know, let's say people on social media, we just know on social media. The moment something changes, we know, and people start commenting. Why are you not wearing your ring? Why are you not seeing your mm -hmm. husband in your picture again? And, so it's it's something you can't avoid. Mm. So accept the fear, but do it. Lillian, did you go through that? Did people ask you where your ring was? What was happening in your life? Of course, in the beginning, those who didn't know, especially when they, um, sometimes they know I'm with my mother. I tell them I'm now with my mother. They will ask what happened. I just tell them I'm now with my mother. Things didn't work. In fact, People close to me really know my story and they know how everything started. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure before I even settled with my mom, they, they had a fair idea why I'm with my mother. So mm -hmm. um, I didn't really have that plenty question from people because a lot of those close to me knew the but story for those from onset. Asked, how did you feel any time you were asked? Um, so. <laughs> Sometimes when they ask you uh, what happened, uh, in fact, narrating how it happened sometimes, you, you, you break down a bit. But um, uh, I'm sure now I can tell the story as it is, yeah, okay. without mm. any. What about the children when it happened initially? How did it affect <laughs> them? Well, especially my second one. She is a very emotional person. Um, I, I saw they, were, they weren't that happy. In fact, the first one was, um, um, I think she was 13, 12, 13, they about. And she was seeing all the fights and arguments and all that. And the, the, sometimes when, when we start arguing, especially the second one, she was, um, she was like 10, they, they would start shouting. So I, I immediately come back to myself, I said, why am I letting the kids see these things? In fact, I don't want them to, to, to see this physical abuse, I mean, the verbal abuse and all that. I don't want them to see those things. So I, I try as much as possible to relate to them good. Well, for now, they are not with me. No, yeah. so when you separated, mm. how did you tell them that uh, finally you two mm. had separated and decided to end the marriage? In fact, in the beginning, um, I, I would say my husband didn't do well to, with my first girl because she, she was the one who um, escorted my things to my mom's place. That was what the father did. He, he called a, a cab and then put my things in the dark. My first daughter should go and show where my, my mom is. She didn't do, he didn't do well to her at that time. So my, my mom was like, when she came to her, she was... Standing like she asked my mother, 
that she have to go back to her father. And my mom says, oh, of course, you go. So she was like, you know, she, she felt some way that, ah, my father says I, I should bring my mother's things. Should I go back? My mom was like, she was very, very sad at that moment. But they, they, she, in fact, she, she understands um, everything because she, at that time, had grown a bit. So she understood why uh, maybe I shouldn't stay with my, the father for again. So I'm sure she, she, she did understand. So she never came back? My, my, my daughter. daughter. Oh, she, she came. At that time, I was at the house, my husband's house, when he sent the things. So my mom called and uh, I had to go back to her and explain things to her. But at that time, she had let my daughter go with the cab back to the house. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so I, I sat down with them some one day. They came to me, you know, they, they were not with me because he said um, he's not giving the kids to me. In fact, I even took him to um, um, that time it was Waju, yeah, social welfare, yeah. I even took him there and they even agreed that the, the kids have to be with me, he should rent for me and all that, but he was still adamant and I didn't, because of the case, I didn't want to proceed further. I said, fine, he, he do take good care, good care of them, so what is it? And we were in the same vicinity, so I can see them anytime, you anytime want I wish. And when, when they are going to school, sometimes I go pick them and then I go and escort them. So I said, oh, why not? Um, they should be with him and that. Uh, so you finally sat down with them? To, yes, To yes, break the yes, news to them? Yes. I, in the, okay, so um, in the beginning, they, they didn't understand. So I sat, them, I sat down with them and they were I so, uh, the elderly one was the one who understands things a bit. That time the third one was very small. But I did sat down with them and I said, I told them that, have you seen what has happened? Um, it's, it's not like I'm happy it has happened, but it has to. So please do um, take your studies seriously and then get a vocation before anything else in your life. So I, I, I do talk to them a lot and I encourage them. And when you told them, mm. uh, what was their reaction? <laughs> so especially the second one, she wasn't okay. You know, like, as for her, she's always like, um, but why, why don't you come back, you know? And I did explain things to him that, that he wants to, that she wants to see all that that is going on. Is that what she wants? And she said no, but um, we can work things out. And I told her, you see, um, even the first one, no, I've gone back and forth with the father before. I've gone to my mom and then came back, but still it didn't work. I told her, <laughs> it's, it has happened to me today. They, they shouldn't think that is how marriage, especially my first one. Mm. She, she asked for her, she, she always say, me, I will not get married though, I will not get married because she doesn't see the essence of marriage. So I did sat down with her and I was like, no. So she wanted to give up on marriage as well? Yes. So I told her, no, don't say that. Mine didn't work, but marriage is a very good thing and some, some are very happy in their marriages. So don't say that. It's, it's, it's not going to be like that all the time. So don't say Did that. Did it affect their studies? Oh, no. I'll say it didn't because... They were always seeing me, and then like they always, they were always seeing me around, and I, I it, it never affected their studies. Yeah. Some messages coming in. Good morning. I'm the former husband. Tell her I'm watching her. She should feel free and talk. <laughs> okay. So he says you should feel free wow. and talk. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is an irre uh, irretrievable commodity, and that's in marriage or divorce. Live your life thinking about your well-being. Life is short. And uh, somebody asked the question: uh, Is the man remarried? Some men are adventurous. He's remarried, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, out of the message, Lillian, you are indeed a survivor, and the Mate and I are so proud of the woman you've become. You, you did not allow divorce to define you. Divorce can be a hard pill to swallow, and I pray for those going through it to overcome the trauma. Dockers, Ogum, Osa. Okay. Uh, hi, good morning. My name is Amando from JJT. 
please kindly tell the psychologist to put out her number for those of us who would want to see her <laughs> off screen. Thank you. All right. We'll try and do that so that you can get to see her off screen. Uh, but, you know, with all these that she's speaking about, I don't, your husband, your ex-husband says, feel free and talk. <laughs> He's watching you. He's yeah, watching you. <laughs> Did you tell him I you know, were right, coming Yeah, here? yeah. You I told, told him. him, yeah. Are you that wow. close to him? Oh, we are very, very cool. We are very cool. I called him that this is the program I'm going to do at Joy Prime. I don't, I'm, and she said, oh, why, he said, oh, why not? And that, um, if I should go and talk well, if I don't talk well, he will call him. He will actually <laughs> call him and then do the explanation. But we are very, very cool. How did you get to that level? Yes, I sat down and I was like, in fact, there's a woman in my church, um, Auntie Agi, yeah. She, she, she told me, Lillian, <laughs> No matter what, be very cool with him so that in case the kids need anything, you can consult him so that he, do, he, he does it for them. So in fact, I learned from what he to she told me. So even as I said now, if my kids need anything, I, can, I, call, I do call him. That this is all, sometimes he will be like, you know? but we are, we are that very cool. People even think, um, in, in the car language, we say something like, Jawarene and Chimpna. That's what people think we are doing, but no. That, that's like not that. what is going on, yeah. Does a wife feel like that? I actually don't know. I do go to the house most of the times. You know, my kids, my first daughter will finish secondary school this year. And then the second one is in Achimota. She is in the first year. So anytime they are back from school and they are going back, I go there, go and pack their things and all that. I don't they know. Live, they live with him. Yeah, they live with him, with, the, with their wife. I don't know if she, had any, she has any issue with me, but I have not, I've not heard anything, or my, my former husband hasn't told me anything that the wife feels in. Because when I go, it is my kids' corner I go to. Okay. Yeah, I go to their room, go and do whatever I have to do with and them. And then you leave. Yes. Let's talk about how children who get affected by divorce, uh, we, are, we, we have to handle such children and how can we get them out of the emotional trauma as well? So, um, every professional is trained to break bad news. So that's why I keep hammering on seeking professional help. It, it's a holistic thing where we are attending to the couples in the, in the previous marriage and then the children of that marriage. First of all, making them understand that marriage, just like everything, has seasons. They can come and go. It doesn't happen for everybody, but in this case, it happened in your parents' um, um, situation. And this is how life can become. So when the children understand that, okay, so it's not as though par our parents um, have become enemies, or this is going to define us in a certain way, but parents come, have to come to that understanding that our separation, we were, you were strangers before you met each other and you decided to come together. So it doesn't change the fact that we can still be cool and then have that sanity to raise the children. Assure your children that this separation is not going to affect the love we have for you. Nothing is going to change. It's just the relationship between mommy and daddy that didn't work. You realize she says now they are cool and now that they are cool, the children are fine. Yeah. So if from the onset, two people who are going through divorce, and this is, this is just to encourage anyone out there who is at that point, focus on settling with your partner amicably. That bitterness, the bickering. But how do you do it? Because um, the initial, that's why I wanted, I asked you, but you said somebody came in to help. The initial stages is more of enmity. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are enemies. You are going to court if it's not caught in its house. Yeah. You are you are enemies. Yes. So how do you overcome this whole enemy level into friendship level? So when we normalize that, when the marriage is not working or when things happen in the marriage and the two of you have come to the point where you say we are we are letting it go, you put the enmity aside. If you have children in the marriage, focus on what's the way forward for the children. How do we still play our role? Because you don't divorce your children. Mm -hmm. Your exactly. children never cease to be, mm -hmm. to, they don't stop being your children. Even after you die, they will still make reference to you as my father, my mother. So how do the two of us put, you, you know what? Yes, I've cheated on you, you are angry. Let's put this aside. What do we do with these children? How do we now come together to still 
parent our children in a very sane and healthy way and we'll continue fighting mm. <laughs> some children understand? out of you know broken homes have grown up and it's affected them yes. badly let me read a message and then we talk about that as well hi sister lillian thank you for sharing your story with us even though i didn't join the conversation early but i do admire your courage and just know you are a strong woman we love you from victoria and also this is coming from press chamber international yeah, as church. well okay yeah. that's nice so they are really supportive <laughs> Sure, you. Sure. For the, the, the broken home is a big issue. Mommy might be able to overcome it because she might meet somebody else and move on with her life. Daddy might. The children. Uh, it goes to court sometimes, custody. Some, some, even, some people even end up fighting the court for custody yeah. again. Because court rule and say children belong to this side and belong to that side. Now, let's roughly say, as parents, you are not able to come together to have an understanding to share. But how are you able to raise your child in a way that your child is not affected emotionally? So you, first of all, has to heal before you can pass on that healing to your child. If the toxicity is still with you as a parent, you manifest it on your child. Mm. And then now the child will quell, they will avoid you. They won't come to you to talk about things that are affecting them. They will just leave you to, to be there whilst they also figure it out. And in figuring it out, a lot can go wrong. But the moment you break that barrier of um, that veil that divorce has, has actually put there and have that relationship, you'll be struggling yourself as a parent. But the moment the focus now moves on how do we heal together? How do we move on from this episode of our lives together? And we are in this together with, you know, with our, our children. We can both go and remarry other people, but it doesn't change the fact that we have children together. So we still need to play that role of, of parenting our children. And once couples come to that understanding, so I'll, for me, I, I advocate that in any event of divorce, the lawyers in, in, in all of this or the family in all of this should bring a psychologist on the team mm. to do the work for the couple to come to that understanding and then it trickles down on their children because the moment you don't recover even when you are in the marriage and you hate your husband you don't want to leave because society will judge you so you mm. are just there and you are enduring the pain and the agony it's it affects your children so divorce is not what affects the children it's the relationship between the couple that affects the children Right. Because if you are still married and you are seeing daddy shouting, mommy yeah. shouting, you, your plates are flying yeah. every day, mm -hmm. your children will pick it up as, okay, then this is how it's supposed yeah. to be. Mm. And then mm -hmm. many parents are hesitant to divorce because, oh, um, I don't want my children to do this. I don't want my children to come from a broken, broken home. home. But they are living in a broken home. Mm. They are it. living in a broken home. Because if there is no peace in the home, your children pick it up. I, I, I think a couple, two or three years ago, I had a client who found out that the husband had gone to marry somebody and then it was a big blow and all mm. of that. Yes, they were already having a very bad marriage. <laughs> and but she's just in been, the same house. Yes, they lived in the same house. Then the man traveled outside. So she was still in Ghana with the, with the kids. And then eventually the man came to take the kids to also go in school there. So the marriage was still valid, but it was always one you know, fight, mm -hmm. this argument, even when the children were living with them. So fast forward, she's in her 50s. The children are also grown. I think at that time, her son was about 27 years or so. And when she heard it, she said, I think this is the breaking point for me. I need to let this marriage go. I've been holding on to it for years and it's not, it hasn't done, it's, it's destroyed me. So when she told her children that I want to divorce your father, they started laughing at her. And then they were like, oh, that that day. <laughs> so she was like, oh, I thought you people were coming to beg <laughs> that, oh, yes. don't do this. The children were actually, yeah. they said, we've been praying for years for you to leave. Mm. Because they can't see the toxicity, the, the, the negative energy in the house. They can't even be free. Mm. You have children who are afraid of their parents, not because their parents are not taking care of them, but they see the energies between the two of them and it's too much for them to handle. There have been cases where 
a little uh, there was this case where the middle child who is the younger one stood up to the dad i think the dad was supposed to be out of town for a while and then he came back earlier than he, he told them he would and then the, the, the daughter was like why are you back early and then he said oh why are you not happy to see me <laughs> and then she said no because when you are here i cannot talk the moment you go i can talk sa. and then the, it was an awakening for the mother that oh my god what am i exposing my children to so they are still married but the, ne- the energy in the marriage is that it, it might it might serve you nothing even if you are divorced because at least there's peace somewhere the children are at a place where the other person is not there to shout so it's not even about the divorce it's about the relationship that exists between these two parents who have custody over these children. Mm. They, you could be sharing custody. Okay, they are with you during the weekdays. They come to me over the weekends or they come to me during vacation. And once we come to that understanding and we do it with mutual respect, I'm telling you, we won't have this broken home syndrome. A single parent home does not mean that children cannot come out successful. Hey. The biggest issue is when the woman says, I won't let the children go to their dad, and the woman says, I won't let the children. So how did you, for you, Lydian, how did you just say, you know what, if daddy wants to take care of you people, let him take care of you people. I'll just live on my own. Okay. So um, as I said, I didn't want them to experience this back and forth, fighting for their custody and all that. So in fact, family... Even my own family really didn't want me to leave the kids with, with him because they are like, Omo Yemba, Adena Ujana Mambema. But I was like, you know what? He said, he, he said I should leave the kids for him. Um, we are in the same vicinity. If I want to see them or if they want to, I want them to come to me, they can come to me anytime. So why not just let it go so that peace will remain, the kids will have their sanity. To, I mean, to, to, to live their life. Will you say, uh, now nah, that that is one of the reasons why they have been able to solve whatever problems that they have and they are now, you know, at, at peace. peace with each other? Possibly. Possibly. Because usually when the divorce is ongoing and the, you know, emotions are all out there, everybody's angry, mm-hmm. we all want to, we want to win at yeah. doing the things that will hurt you. Mm. So I want to take over. Yeah, the one who will do the most thing that will hurt you has won, literally. (laughs) So sometimes the women feel that if I rob you of your children, knowing that you love your children, a best show. And aha, my yard So then they're happy. But at the end of the day, your children are the ones who will struggle for this. So again, I'll bring it back to that point of reasoning Mm. that between us, you are not my friend. We are not cool. Mm. But I have three children with you. I have four children with you. I have one child with you. If you want the child, how, I give the child to you. Not necessarily give the child to you, but how do we co-parent? Yeah. Away from our differences, how do we co-parent in a healthy way? Where now all the conversations or the, the energy going forward is channeled in raising our children or our child and not we continue fighting. Deep down my heart, I don't like you again. You too, I know you don't like me again, but we have a child or children to attend to. How do we do this like adults? How do we do this that will be safe for our child? So if it means sharing the custody, sorry, okay, I don't want totally to give the child to you, but can we do weekdays and weekends? Can we start with that? Or can we do holidays and school, school days? And then definitely, we are human beings. There is a part of us that will... Will, will calm down when these energies come to play and we move on from there. We have to move on. Uh, a, a message, I'm in a crucial situation with my girlfriend, but I have not met that one person who could solve it and it's killing me emotionally and physically. <laughs> now, please put your number out for those who want to get in touch okay. with you because I know so many people watching right now oh. need you. <laughs> All right, so you can reach me on 0245 Zero two four five two five nine six three nine. If you call me and I'm not able to pick up because probably I'm in clinic or something, you can send me a text okay. or a WhatsApp. Um, I'm also very active on, on, on Instagram. 
you can find me as Madam Mental. Okay. So send me a message or, you know, and then we can take it from Fantastic. there. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I want to say a big thank you to you, Lillian, for putting up all this courage and sharing your story with the world. Thank That's you. very courageous. And I hope most women out there will be able to emulate what you are doing and be able to overcome the emotional aspects. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for being here thank today. Uh, we thank are super grateful. Me. So Lillian did share her story. And now is our psychologist for today who has helped us. I hope you've taken yeah. her number. If you need help, <laughs> just make yeah, sure you call her and she will be there for you. <laughs>